All right, guys, it's Sunday night service, and I'm Danny Williamson, and we're talking about self care today. It's self care self care Sunday, and we are getting ready to have seven days of Heart Health Month promotions for you all, and it actually starts tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be Mindful Monday, but I'm going to talk to you a few things. This is going to be a little different Sunday night service tonight. It's going to be short and sweet, but when you guys get on, tell me where you're from. Tell me all of that. Tell me what you do. What do you do for self-care? And I want to know, what do you do? Do you, um, well, tell me, what do you do to take care of yourself? So here's the thing. We are a nation of empty vessels. It's a fact. We are pouring from empty vessels. There is nothing in our cup. Our cups are not full. Our cups are empty. And we have nothing to pour from. We have something to pour from. We have nothing to pour out of it. So, which is evident by all the chronic disease we have, the mental health issues we have, the anxiety, the depression, the irritability, the, you know, divorce. I mean, there's just so much that goes into um, mental health and being stressed out and not filling up our vessel. You see, you fill your vessel, vessel up because you're worthy of that. You put your oxygen mask on first when the airplane is having trouble because you're worthy to be one who gets off the airplane. You don't put that on there so that you can save everyone else. But the beauty of this is when you are 150%, it's the overflow, the ripple effect that everyone benefits from, the overflow, okay? So all that being said, how can you lower your liver enzymes? Okay. All right, exercise, take great vitamins and clean eating with good food. That, Chris Smith, is the perfect way to start off this Sunday night service. Exercise, right here in the book, eat well, sleep well, move well. Um, Take great vitamins and clean eating with good food. It starts with food. It sure does. And it's so important. Do you know that close to 80% of people experience stress that affects their physical health. Well over 70% of people say that stress infects, it infects, affects their mental health. Stress does not discriminate by age either. High school students cite that stress is their number one concern. This is in a book called Wild and Well, Danny's Six Common Sense Steps to Radical Healing. Um, American employers spend over $300 billion every year on health care and lost work days related directly to stress. Directly to stress. This is unbelievable to me. We are a nation of burned out, of burned out people. As much as 80% of workplace accidents come from stress or stress-related problems, such as being too distracted or excessively tired. So what did you do this weekend? I want to know, what did you do this weekend to um, care for yourself, for self-care? What did you do? And I'm going to tell you what I did. You know what I did today? I didn't prepare a Sunday night service. That's why this is going to be real short and sweet. And I'm going to talk about Heart Health Month and a little bit of that because the weather was beautiful today. I had breakfast with a friend of mine from Paducah who was in town. And then I worked in the yard all day long from 1230 until 430. That's four hours. I did not stop. I worked in the yard and that was my self-care. I took my shoes off. I I literally spent three hours picking up pine cones. I have a tiny little yard, but picking up pine cones, burning them in the fire pit. And just that was my self-care. I cleaned up stuff outside. I stayed outside. I didn't do one thing. If you could see this office, it was a mess. 
And this weekend, I also went to our board retreat or advance, we call it an advance, for um, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And I filled myself up. If you follow me on Instagram, look at my video I just shared um, probably 15 minutes ago on the American Foundation for Suicide uh, Prevention Retreat or Advance. We call it an advance because we're advancing forward, cutting down on suicide um, rates. And we filled our vessel up at a convent, at a convent. Amy says, walking daily outside as much as possible. It makes me feel better mentally as well as physically. That's right. And that is self-care. So here's the thing. Here's what I tell my patients. And here's what I've written in the book here is build a life that you don't have to escape from. Build your self-care into your life. Now, that's hard. I was a single mom on food stamps, no money whatsoever in school full time. There was no self-care and there was no building in time. There was no margin at all for me. Um, and so, you know, it was really difficult. If I have a heart stint, can I take, oh, oh, okay. We're going to, we're talking about self-care right now, but um, yeah, that one is a, is a tricky question right there. So yeah, in fact, this is Heart Health Month and that's what we're getting ready to talk about is um, Heart Health Month right there. Look who this is. I don't know who this is. Follow the Wild and Well guidelines. There we go. Infrared sauna three times a week, chiropractic monthly energy medicine, play with my grandkids. All right, in Paducah, it just says put Facebook user, but that's my home right there, Paducah. So that's right. What's the wild and well way? Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, de-stress well, commune well. Absolutely. So I want to know what is it that you do for self-care? And then I'm going to talk to you about some things. And then I'm going to read to you from the book. You know, the book is now on Audible. You can go straight to Audible and download it. Use one of your credits or buy it and listen to it while you're out working out while you're walking, while you're on the treadmill or whatever, you can listen to the book, which that's exciting. So this is Heart Health Month. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women. Number one killer of men and women in the United States. R absolutely ridiculous. One in five women will die from cardiovascular disease. Do you want to know what the number the number one sign for cardiovascular disease is for 50% of the people who will die from cardiovascular disease, sudden cardiac death, no warning, no signs, sudden death, dying suddenly. One of my dear friends, in fact, one of my very best friends, Kim from home, Kim and Margot and I grew up together. Uh, We've been friends for 40 something years. Her husband died Wednesday, sudden cardiac death. Now, he had cardiovascular. He died of heart attack. He didn't die on the spot. He died within a matter of hours of getting to the hospital. Massive heart attack. 60 years old from my hometown. We grew up together at Bethel Baptist Church. Kevin and I did. Um, he was three years older than me. Three, I think three years older than me. Yeah, because he was 60 and I'm 57. And he died Wednesday. They've been married 40 something years. 40, 40 years would be 41 years. And he died of heart disease. He had a massive heart attack. He died Wednesday. And um, it's Kim's husband. Kim's husband, not Margot. Not Margot. Margot's flying in. Um Mar Margo and Kim and I have been friends forever. So he died suddenly. And, you know, he had just recently started changing some things, changing his diet, um, things like that, trying to eat cleaner. Um, but he's dead. And so I'm going to visitation and a funeral, funeral on Friday and Saturday for a friend of mine who died on February the 1st, the very first day of Heart Health Month of a cardiovascular event. So here's the thing. None of us are born. Well, I shouldn't say that. Most of us are not born with heart disease. We turn it on. 
Now I am living proof. Whatever you turn on, you can turn off or dial back so, so much. It's not even funny, but it starts with lifestyle. Chronic lifestyle diseases are just that. They are turned on by your lifestyle and they are turned off by your lifestyle. Well, Danny, what's a chronic lifestyle disease? High blood pressure, high cholesterol, lupus like me, fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, joint pain, arthritis, autoimmune disease, um, migraine headaches, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic itching. I can, the list goes on and on and on. Those are chronic lifestyle diseases. If you don't believe me, then look back. Were you born with headaches? Were you born with anxiety or joint pain or high blood pressure or high cholesterol? No, you weren't. We turned them on. We turned them on. And whatever you turn on, you can turn off. Heart disease is a big deal. It kills more women than and men than prostate cancer, breast cancer, all of it combined. Heart disease, heart disease. This is National Heart Month. We start today. This is self-care Sunday right here. Tomorrow is Mindful Monday. We're going to talk about blood pressure tomorrow and knowing your numbers. And if you have, if your blood pressure is creeping up, mine was 111 over 80 something um, at the dentist on Thursday, 111 over 80 something, which is a little high for me. I'm usually like 98, 99 over 68, but I don't know why I was stressed because it was Thursday and I'd been up most of the night on uh, Wednesday night um, with my friend Kim. So tomorrow's Mindful Monday. We're going to put on special CoQ10 and L-carnitine, both things that are incredible for heart health. Tuesday is Tasty Tuesday. That's going to be dinners with Danny and we're going to be having a heart health dinner. And I actually may go live on that. Um, probably salmon and beets because beets help create nitric oxide, which open the blood vessels. So we're going to have flow on special and Citronox, probably one of our um, two of our top selling products for blood pressure, for uh, blood flow to all the private parts and to the heart. Wednesday's Wellness Wednesday. We're going to get your heart into wellness. And we're going to talk about Flipping 50, my friend Deborah Atkinson with Flipping 50. Um, and we're going to put Wild Caught Omega and Pro Omega LDL on sale. Uh, Thursday is Treat Yourself Thursday. Treat yourself to relaxation time with magnesium. Magnesium is one of my all-time favorite minerals out there. It is a smooth muscle relaxer, so it helps lower blood pressure, but also joint pain and muscle twitches migraine headaches, anxiety, excuse me, depression, constipation, so much more than just heart disease. That's going to be on sale Thursday, Friday, follow Friday. I want to know from you who inspires you, who, what social media people inspire you. And I want you to share it so that we're sharing our heart and we're showing our heart and we're going to put the daily vitamin and vitamin D3 on sale. Selfie Saturday, we're having arteria, arteria cell on sale. So we got a week of fun for heart month, heart month, heart month, heart month. Um, you bet. So do you know, ah, uh, there you go, Allison. I soaked in magnesium last night, relaxing. That's right. And that is a form of self-care, taking a bath, lighting a candle. Just, I put the water all the way up. I get as high as I can and as hot as I can. And I get my hair up here on top of my head like a crazy woman. And I've got, because my neck hurts constantly from standing on my head too much, teaching yoga when I was young and crazy and dumb. Um, Magnesium is one of my all-time favorites. It's going to be on sale this week. Um, Emily, yeah, Emily, I'm so, I'm, yeah, it was bad. Uh, Emily, let me tell you what she does for self-care. Sauna, exercise, she eats well, she goes to church, she builds community, Epsom salt baths, days by herself. That's right. Staying positive, reading self-health books. That's right. Spend time with people I love and stay away from negative people. Amen to that. Set some boundaries and always, set boundaries always. And you know what? Learning to say no. That's exactly right, my friend. That is exactly right. Mary, what do you do? 
for self-care. This is one of my dear friends right here. Let me tell you, we got all kinds of things in store for you all coming up with Crunchy. Oh, I go to bed so early. Me too. I mean, me too. Like I'm going to be in bed an hour and a half as um, best form of self-care that I can manage to keep a routine about. That's exactly right. Yep. I'm a great sleeper. Praise God to that. So, all right. We are a nation of single vessels. I mean, of empty vessels, single vessels. When you are stressed and overextended, it's not just you who suffers. You also affect everyone else within your sphere of influence. And that includes not just your family and close friends, but also everyone with whom you come into contact. Eleanor Brown said it well, rest and self-care are so important. When you take time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve others from the overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. Amen to that. Are you an empty vessel right now? Are you a single mom with young kids? Are you a married mom with young kids, with teenage kids, or even raising your grandchildren? Are you single but don't want to be? But it's not stressful for me, but still. I spent my weekend at a convent, by the way. <laughs> That's another story you can read about or watch it on uh, Instagram. Do you have a demanding job? Are you experiencing job loss? Have you had a recent death in the family? Do you have ailing parents? Yep, I have an ailing mom. Are you dealing with personal health issues? Are you suffering from an accident? Do you feel trapped in a hard marriage? Are you going through a divorce? Are you feeling the after effects of, traumat of a traumatic childhood? You get the idea. There are plenty of reasons you may be running on empty. You can't serve from an empty vessel. And if you're a woman who is in charge of keeping the household running, let me tell you from experience that all those people who look up to you to keep things operating, they need you to be healthy more than they need a ride to soccer practice. Yes, I wrote that in the book. But there are no vacations from being a mother, and we all know this. So we try and we try and we keep pouring into our families from that empty, empty vessel. I've lived it myself, and now I witness it every day in my practice. My patients, these young and not so young wives and mothers, are exhausted. They're not simply, they are simply worn out. They have nothing else to give but they have to keep going. They don't have a choice, right? Until one day, the breaking point happens. There will come a time when you have to get, when you have given all you can give and something else has to give that shouldn't have to. Many times it's a marriage or a relationship or your health. That is why I say that it's not selfish to put your health first because you are hands down a better spouse, a better partner, a better parent, a better son or a daughter, employee or employer when you put yourself first. OK, that's just a tiny little bit from the book. What else are you guys doing over here for self-care? Every, oh, everyone loves your book. Thank you, Emily. I appreciate it. You know, I had a lady walk in to the supplement store this week. I was so, so honored. She, look, she walks in in front of all the customers standing there. She goes, I picked this up. I've had it for a year. I'm so mad. I haven't read it. I said, what are you talking about? She said, I read the first third of it in one sitting. She said, why isn't that book a number one, a New York Times bestseller? I said, yeah, at, tell, you're asking me. I don't know. Yeah, she said, Danny, it is an incredible book and I am honored. I'm so mad that I didn't read it and I apologize. I said, it's not a big deal. When when you're ready, right, the teacher comes. So um, anyway, it is an excellent book, by the way. If you don't have it, you need it. Danny, you are listing my entire existence with those health conditions. I was raised not to think of myself and never disappoint anyone. Just in the past couple of years that I'm trying to break that pattern, I'm trying to consider my needs. I love going to the salt room with friends. Yes. And I'm learning to say no. Candy, that's huge. That salt room, I've only been twice. I fell asleep literally within a minute probably of laying in there. That was incredible. 
and learning to say no. That's right. And you know, the salt rooms, there are Groupons on, on Groupon for salt rooms all the time. Those are inexpensive ways to go take care of yourself, right? Amen to all that. Look here. Julie says, CBD bath salts are amazing. Yeah, I don't have any of those. I would love to have that. I need to create that. Uh, we have a wild and well CBD immune support now that we've just created. And we did create it with the creator. And uh, now we're working on a wild and well lube CBD intimate oil that was supposed to be out this week. And it's not. Um, Epsom soap, that soap bath, salt bath with some organic apple cider vinegar. Oh my gosh, Nancy, that sounds good. Um, that sounds real good. All right, ladies, I'm not going to keep you on here. I just want you to, I want to remind you, this is self-care Sunday. Learn to say no, and it's okay. You want to know about that, Julie? People don't like it when you say the truth. They really don't like it when you tell the truth. That's for sure. Even if you're saying it kind, 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 um, they don't like direct they don't like the truth. I have learned that. And they for darn sure don't like boundaries. But you teach people how to treat you. And I am telling you, if you don't set your boundaries, people will take advantage. And that's just human nature. That's not mean people. That's none of that. Um, but set your boundaries. And yes, life is tough. And I appreciate that. I'm all right. I'm not perfect. But dang it, I try journaling. That is a great way. And I don't journal. I am awful, Allison. I don't journal and I should. I've gone about it through the years on and off, but it's not my thing. It's not my thing. Look here, Elizabeth yesterday went to Aldi's to shop the organic foods. I haven't done this in forever. I wanted to turn off my Hashimoto's. Yep. 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 Um, I've shared with others too. So hopefully you have helped others through that learning from learning from you. That's right. And I appreciate that, guys. I try. I'm at peace right now and I fight for it every day. That's amazing. Praise God, Elizabeth. Praise God. I do enjoy my time to a long time to recharge. Absolutely. I know it's important and I don't have to justify it, but my family doesn't seem to understand how important it is for me. I'm going to sneak in the other room right now and read. Yes, do it. I don't know who this is. It just says Facebook user. It's okay that they don't understand, you know? Um, and you know, if they're not taking care of themselves, then that's on them. <clears throat> that's not on you. But I learned the hard way. You have to take care of yourself. My sauna is right there and I sit in it and I take care of myself. I say no. You know, I'm not doing Sunday night service. This is the first Sunday night service I've done in over a month. And I'm not doing another one until I think it's March the 8th because I have the largest presentation of my life coming up in New York City. In fact, I have three presentations. I have one next week for the National Charity League. Um, and I'm talking about living your best life, your, your wild and well life. And then I have to fly to New York to finish up something there and record my signature um, speech, little um, three minute speech. And then I fly to New York City and I am a presenter at the Integrative Healthcare Symposium on February 23rd. And I'm discussing your past does not have to predict your future. How adverse childhood experiences may be the single most unaddressed public health crisis in the United States. Danny Williamson. And I'll be speaking at 1.30 Sunday, February 20, or I'm sorry, Friday, February 24th, after Dr. Mark Hyman speaks from 8.30 to 9.45 on the emerging science of longevity. So I'm on the same day as Dr. Mark Hyman, and I'm very stressed, very stressed. So I am taking time off from everything except preparing for this biggest presentation of my life. And I would appreciate y'all's love and um, support and prayers that I can stand up there and speak with a clear head and with authority and, and um, teach these healthcare providers who may not be addressing childhood trauma. And I know it wasn't until I addressed the trauma 
You know, I grew up in complete chaos. My grandfather died by suicide. My mom attempted suicide multiple times. I had a stepfather that was a child molester. I had one who beat me up my senior year in high school. I mean, I started with irritable bowel syndrome in high school. And I, and I progressed on to lupus and depression and itching and fibromyalgia. And I reversed every single bit of that once I healed my gut and I learned about diet. But then I took it to a whole nother level four years ago when I addressed the childhood trauma. And I apologize to every patient that I've ever had that I never addressed the childhood trauma. Now we give the ACE questionnaire to every single patient who comes in. Um, it's also in the book, the Adverse Childhood Experience Questionnaire, the whole first parts on trauma. So I am setting my boundaries. And then starting in March, we start a whole spring season of Sunday night services um, for you guys with tons and tons of great information. You'll do great. You'll be prepared. Hugs and prayers. Oh, my gosh, I'm so nervous. I can't stand it. Oh, my Lord. Uh, I mean, I am really, really nervous, you guys. OK, let's see here. I met someone who knows you. David at Three Rivers Wellness. He sings your praises and I'm beginning to look at your work. I'm so excited for the journey. Oh, I'm on. Kimberly, I am too. Yes, David is amazing. David and I graduated um, nurse practitioner school together. David and Darwin and I were all three great friends. And I was the old lady in the class, the oldest one, actually. They have now opened up a ketamine clinic and I plan on having them on Sunday night service talking about the power of ketamine for mental illness, PTSD, um, depression, suicidal ideations. I mean, ketamine is, is a game changer for people. Um, love, support, and prayers. You got this. Thank you. I say that 50 times a day to, 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 to patients. So yes, I am going to be myself. And yes, Dr. Mark Hyman is amazing. And I I know that I'll be so nervous. I'll have to listen to his lecture later because I'll be a nervous wreck. And they have me right after lunch, 12 o'clock. Yeah, 1.30. Well, actually, yeah, 1.30 is lunch Oh, or ends lunch. So everybody's going to be tired. But OK, tell me what else, guys? What else do you all do for self-care? Um, Sherry Thompson, you sent me a new patient and I was so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Next logical step on your journey. Yes, you're a powerful message. You've got this. Thank you, sweet friend. I appreciate you. Um, I am so grateful that you have read the book. You haven't read it all yet, but I, I hope that you love it. And guys, if you have bought this book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, please review it. I only have 249 reviews. This book should be a New York Times bestseller. All right. You guys are not telling me. Oh, here we go. Here you go. Hiking, forest bathing, absolutely one of the best ways for self-care. All right, guys, I appreciate you. Go do something tonight. It's 639. Go do something tonight that's going to give you some self-care that's going to lower your cortisol levels, lower your blood pressure le levels. Maybe it's getting to bed earlier. Maybe it's taking some magnesium. Maybe it's taking a little CBD. Maybe it's having a little cup of tea. You know, maybe it's going outside and putting your feet to the earth and looking up at that beautiful moon that's up there tonight. I don't care what you do. Um, I just want you to take care of yourself because you know what? We've got one shot here and I want it to be the best for all of you. Oh, man. Thank you, Allison. Thank you for that. And if you bought any of that online, please go on there as soon as we finish up. And please, please, please review it, even if you just give it the stars, you know, but I would, I, you bet ashwagandha for self-care. Yes, yes, and yes. And thank you for all you do to encourage us. Man, let me tell you something. It takes a village of encouragement. Every friggin' one of you are warrior women out there. If there's any men, you're warrior men, but most of my people are women. You are warrior women. And if you are here Alive on February the 5th, 2023 at 6.40 p.m., you have stinking survived. You are a fighter. You are a warrior. You are a survivor. And don't ever forget that, ma'am. 
you most likely were born happy, healthy, and whole, and you can get back there. No matter what happened to you in your childhood, no matter what horrible things happened to you, no matter what bad things have happened to you in your adulthood, if you will just believe that you can get back to where you were and where you were meant to be, I know you can do it. Yeah, you got to change your diet. Yes, you got to move your body. I mean, you've got to decrease stress. You have to cut out the soul suckers. You have to build community. You have to sleep well and poop well. You got to do those things. But I am telling you, it doesn't take much for your body to turn around. Your body wants to be 150%. I mean, the Bible is clear. I'm a big fan of the Bible. The Bible is clear on what you do, right? Daniel gave up 2,000 years ago red meat, white dairy, all dairy is white, and red wine. All right. He didn't give up white wine. No, I think he gave up wine in general. But uh, I got a little wine there. I was cooking with wine. Um, and so every single one of you, if it's good enough for Daniel, it's good enough for you. He knew two thousand years ago how inflammatory the food of the king's palace was if you're getting your oh oh I, see this is why i'm like a friggin' squirrel i need a I need a script i watched the movie last night the founder i was just playing around on netflix i have ella's netflix and i don't have netflix the founder is on ray Kroc from mcdonald's let me tell you that was a great documentary he was a he was a the McDonald's started off as an amazing place. It really did. I mean, good French fries, nothing frozen, burgers, not nothing frozen, um, real ice cream, things like that. That was a great documentary. You should watch it. I watched it. Um, I don't have any idea um, how I got on there, but I did. Greta, we're going to end on Greta over here because I think she's the one, uh, the last one, sauna walks, exercise, reading, meditation, get together with some friends, talk about all the holistic things. That's right. Garden, excuse me, I got the hiccups here, and bake. That is a great self-care routine program. Just, you know, doesn't have to be every day, but yeah, Greta, that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen, seven days of health start tomorrow. If you don't will follow me on Instagram, then you need to, because we'll be talking about it on Instagram right there. Oh, April, I'll end this with you then. Is red meat bad for you? No, uh, -uh. but Daniel gave it up in the Bible. Red meat is bad for you if you have a sensitivity or an allergy to red meat. Absolutely. Um, steak, chicken, uh, you know, pot roast, all of that, that's red meat. Um, it's bad for you if you have a sensitivity to it. I don't have a sensitivity to it. Or if you've been bitten by the alpha-gal tick and you have alpha-gal, then you can't eat red meat. It'll create inflammation. So, you know, again, everyone's different. So it's just, you got to pay attention to your symptoms. Julie, thank you so much. You ladies are incredible. And I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And I appreciate your support. This was the hardest thing I ever did. If you don't own it, go get it. It's actually on sale, I think, on Amazon. And it's now on Audible. It's on Kindle. It's a hardback. It's a paperback. I mean, I'm telling you, it's getting there. I've worked my butt off. And you guys are, um, are amazing. And red meat can be heart healthy for sure. If you're eating lean grass-fed, no hormones, no antibiotics in it, no bad feed in it. Red meat can be very healthy for you. It's loaded with protein. It's loaded with amino acids. I mean, oh my gosh, I love red meat and I eat red meat, um, but I don't need a ton of red meat. I eat more chicken and fish um, for sure. So, you know, again, every single person is different. Every person's different. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Love you. I didn't know the Grammys were on. Maybe I'll go check it out. I never watch award shows because I'm always disappointed. But um, it's Heart Health Month. Take care of your heart. Take care of your health, right? We're going to talk about things this entire month that you need to do for to prevent cardiovascular 
disease. All right. You guys are amazing. I love you. I appreciate you. You guys are just hands down the best tribe ever. Share, like, comment. Let's lift up a million people. Let's start healing and helping a million, million people. And also watch out because uh, Mary Chavinko and I are going to start doing monthly uh, education things at the office on Crunchy and just 